In a previous video, we discussed bias in word embeddings. What we discussed was that we might have words like man, woman, and these are words in a high dimensional space, but the idea was that there is this direction in the embedding space. And when we ended the video, we noticed that there seems to be a correlation with that gender direction and professions. And we discussed that this was indeed a reason for concern. If you have these vectors correlate, then that suggests that the embedding has learned that maybe more men should be doctors than women. And that's a pattern we would not want to have in our machine learning systems. We did see, however, that for fast text embeddings, for spacey embeddings, and even bipair embeddings, this is the case. So in this video, what I would like to do is discuss a de-biasing technique, one that is using linear projections, in order to figure out if that might remedy the situation that we currently have. So let's draw out this man, woman, doctor, nurse situation one more time. And this will be in two dimensions, which is simplifying things, but the idea will also hold for higher dimensions. Let's say that these are the word embeddings in two dimensional space. Well, then let's consider that direction one more time. In theory, this might be the gender direction that we alluded to earlier. And given this direction, what I can do is I can say, well, let's take that average gender direction of sorts and let's put a ruler on the origin and let's just draw a line that's parallel. Now, what I could maybe say is that this is the gender axes. And what I could argue is I could say, well, you know what? Every word embedding that's in my collection, man, woman, nurse, and doctor, I do not want that embedding to have any information whatsoever that correlates with that gender axis. So that means that I'm going to have to filter away all the information that is on this axis. In other words, that will be this part, this direction. All of that needs to be filtered away. And what you can then say is, well, that means that from this origin over here, I can again grab my ruler, but now I'm going to move the ruler to be at a 90 degree angle with the gender axis. And you'll notice that this line that I'm drawing now, this blue line, as far as the gender axis is concerned, there is a 90 degree angle between the gender axis and this blue axis which I will now refer to as the neutral axis. And theoretically, you might argue, well, that neutral axis should have no information about gender. The blue line is going through the origin, and that means that the gender axis value for the blue line is zero everywhere on that blue line. So what I can just go ahead and do is I can project all of my words onto that neutral axis. So that means that doctor needs to be projected onto it. That means that nurse has to be projected onto it as well as man and as well as woman. And that means that the meaning of the embeddings might be changing. Effectively, the embedding for man as well as the embedding for woman would now start pointing both to this point. And you would have the same thing here for doctor and nurse. And this might mean that doctor and nurse might start meaning the same thing. It might mean more generally a profession in the medical field. Just like man-woman could mean a description of your gender without specifying which one. That's the theory behind filtering away on an axis in word embedding space. The idea is that you're going to define an axis, in this case it's gender, that you would like to have no meaning anymore. You would like all the stereotypes based on that axis to disappear. Now, in this visualization, we're doing everything in two dimensions. Usually when we're dealing with word embeddings, then they're not two dimensional. Typically they're more like 300 dimensions, but the linear algebra can still be applied. Instead of projecting onto a line, you might be projecting onto a hyperplane, but that's a mathematical detail that I don't want to get too much into. This idea, projecting away from an axis, that remains the same, also in high dimensions. Now, this does give us an interesting problem. 
We know how to filter away from this gender axis, but the question remains, how do we come up with a good gender axis? How do we know what to filter away from? Because again, projecting away, that is relatively easy. That's just linear algebra. But finding the right gender axis is not necessarily trivial, and it deserves mentioning how you might get there. One thing that you could do is you can say, well, I'll just take the embedding for man, and I'll subtract from that the embedding for woman, and I'll just use that as my gender axis. Another thing that you could do is you could say, well, you know, there's man, woman, there's he, she, and I can probably come up with a bunch of these. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to take the average of all of these embeddings and have that determine what my gender axis is. Another thing that you could do is you can say, well, how about I don't just have one gender axis, how about I have a gender plane? If I have a lot of embeddings here, I can also just apply principal component analysis to come up with this plane that I want to filter away from instead of just this one axis. And that way you can filter away from, let's say, two dimensions at the same time. Another thing that we could do is we could say, I'm mostly concerned about the professions, so I'm going to take words like steward and stewardess, and I'll make a list of these profession terms, and I'll make sure that those define the gender axis. Now, what I'm hoping to get at here is that there are lots of ways to come up with these projections, and that also means that there are lots of ways to perhaps filter out bias. In particular, I've only been highlighting this gender axis, but I can certainly also imagine religion being a theme here, or maybe ethnic background. So what I'll do for now is I'll just limit myself to taking an average gender axis, a single one, looking what the effect is based on the charts that we made in the previous video, and then we're going to have a discussion if this debiasing technique solves the problem that we're interested in. So just very briefly, I would like to show the code that does the debiasing. Now there's a lot of code on screen, but the main part that's important is this part. What I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, have a look at man, woman at that direction. Also take king, queen into account, brother and sister. And then take those three directions that could represent the gender axis and then average them. And then the embedding that I end up with here, I could argue that that embedding represents the gender axis. And that's what I'm using to project away from. And I'm doing that in this line of code here. In the what lies package that I am using, the pipe operator stands for project away. So every vector in this embedding set over here is going to be projected away. Away from what? Well, this normalized embedding. And what I've done here is make a very similar plot to what I've had before. I've got a couple of professions here where there might be a male female gender stereotype happening. I've got some male-female words here, and I've also got some random words. And in this example, we see that around here, that there is some similarity which we preferred would not be there. If we were now to apply our debiasing trick, the chart will look different. Previously, we would see some form of correlation appear here, but right now it seems like these values over here well, they might as well have been the values around here. Visually, at least, it seems that there's a lot less similarity happening here. As a consequence, though, we also see that there's a lot less similarity happening here. Before, we had a cluster over here, but because we are filtering away gender information, we might also need to expect that a lot of information about the subtleties of man, woman, him, her, boy, girl is now also lost. And you could argue that that's a potential downside. So what I've done now is I've repeated this exercise not just for fast text, but I've also repeated it for spacey as well as the byte pair embeddings. And in general, I would argue that if you have a look at the charts and just inspect it visually, it feels like the cluster that you typically see here is gone or lessened below. So you can see that there is indeed an effect of this debiasing. One thing that is fair to point out is that it's not necessarily a perfect debiasing. We still see that there is some similarity lingering, especially in the spacey and byte pair embeddings. 
But you could say that on this one particular definition of bias, we might have a trick at our disposal to deal with it. Unfortunately though, that attitude of, oh, we've applied a trick and we've solved it, it's wrong. It's actually not enough. And to some extent, we might be able to say that these charts are a little bit dangerous because they do suggest that we're making a big improvement, even though a large chunk of the gender bias is definitely still in these embeddings. And it's highly unfortunate, maybe even slightly counterintuitive, but in the next video, I'm going to explain why the bias in these word embeddings actually still persists.